Hi, everybody. I'm going to go ahead right now and show you how to take your sketch drawing, convert it into uh, Illustrator, and color it. So let's begin. So I'm going to start with Create New. And depending upon the, the scale or the orientation of the piece, so right now it's a vertical. So I'm going to, going to keep it at letter. And I will go ahead and set it at vertical orientation and say Create. Now, when this opens up, um, we're going to have an artboard that is a vertical orientation. Now, right now, up here with the upper uh, right-hand side, I'm going to change it from painting to tracing. Because that's what I want to do is I'm going to bring out the tracing tools. I'm going to take this image right here on the left, left-click and drag it. And I'm going to go ahead and put it onto the artboard. There we go. So there it is. There's my image right there. Now, I need to convert this digitally. Um, so I've got my image in there. It's raw. You can see the pencil lines. You can see the red marks. Uh, you can see, uh, and then, of course, the inking that's on there. To convert this image, I'm going to be looking at the tools here on the right-hand side. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click open advanced. That's the number one thing. Second I'm going to do is I'm going to click on ignore white. Okay. Now I'm going to keep it at black and white. And I've got three sliders right here. My main one, which is threshold. And then my refining one, which is paths, corners, and noise. Paths are the lines between corners. Corners are how many corners are how accurate. The curves are going to be to the original drawing. And noise is like background, uh, fuzz, dots, uh, individual little dots. Uh, that might have been picked up in the original photograph. So I'm going to go ahead and click on preview. There we go. So there's my initial image. So you can see it's a little rough. It actually has contorted it quite a bit. So what I want to do is I want to add the paths high. There we go. So it gets a little bit more. I'm going to go take corners more. Okay. And the noise. So you take it down. Eh, pretty good. Take it up. Ooh, too much. Let's take it back down to the bottom again. Ooh, there we are. And now let's go ahead. And I'm going to take the threshold here. Crank it up just a little bit. So I get more and more of my line work in. That line work is coming in. There we go. So I get it pretty close to back to where it should be to my original drawings. Pretty darn good there. There we are. Just takes lots of little subtle little movements, lots of subtle little, little changes there to kind of get it right where you like it. Now, I'm pretty good right there. I've got a little few things in there that I'll have to clean out, but that's okay. But the objects, though, are looking pretty good in terms of my original design. Let's go ahead and take a see if I take um, the paths down a little bit low again. What happens? Simplifies the drawing. Let's take it up just a high, tiny bit. Cleans up the line work a bit. That is pretty nice right there. Now let's go ahead and take the corners down just a hair. So everything gets a little, a little softer. I take it more. I'm like, mm, do I like that? Is it too much? Well, I can always take it back up again. I think I like it a little higher up. I get more of my angles, more of the curves, more of the different. Now let's go ahead and try that noise. Bring it up about 50%. Ooh, look how much that just sort of blocks that in. Let's take that noise out all the way there. All right, so pretty much good, pretty good here with this. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and hit expand. Okay, hit the expand button. All right. Now, once I've hit that, now I've got basically got all, basically things I need that I want to use, things I want to get rid of. So first, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some stuff. Let's go ahead and use the uh, white arrow here, and I'm going to click and drag objects. Hit that delete. So I click and drag a little box around it, and then I type the de delete key twice on my keyboard. I can just use the eraser if I wanted to, and go up and hit those little dots. And that's a possibility, right? And I got this guy down here. So now I can go through now and just make one big one. I go, ah, okay, I can see the last little bits that I've got there. So I've got a little bit of business here I gotta get rid of. Uh, where else was there? A little bit down here. And a little bit down there. I go back into here. Yeah, looking pretty darn good. All right, so now what I need to do is go ahead and use my lasso tool because I wanna separate these drawings a little bit. For coloring. So I'm going to use my lasso tool. Let's say I'm going to go and grab this guy first here. So I'm going to open in and the lasso tool, I just did the left click and I held, I'm still holding on to it as I go around the object, come up around and overlap that line. Now it selects that character. So if I use the shift and the arrow key, I can move it out and away. So I'm going to color him first. So what I'm going to do is take these guys and move them out of the way. So let's go ahead here and I'm going to select just them. And I'm going to go ahead and move them out of the way. 
So let's go ahead and use my shift and left arrow. Bye-bye, boys. Go chill off to the side. And I'm going to pull this one down first and do some coloring on this one. So I'll take my bug here. Oops. Oh, my white arrow, my direct select tool. And I take this one, move it on down, and let's scale them up. So I'm going to use my free transform tool, hold the shift key, and make them bigger. All right, cool. So I have this big guy up here. So now what I want to do is I want to go back and change him up a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, select him. Oops, I have to use the white arrow, so I select just him. There we are. And I can go back and play with it a little bit. Let's say the stroke here, I want to take it down a little bit. All right, I can go ahead and go to the line tool, which is right here, and check on the line weight. And I can say I can make it larger, look how huge that got. Or I can go ahead and let's take it down to one. But we can take it down to smaller. Let's go 0.5. Let's take it down 0.25. There we go. It gives me a little bit more. But if I go right up here to the uh, with my fill box and my stroke box, let's see if we go and take the this and turn that off. What do we get? Oh, everything's gone. See that? So we want to keep that. That's all of our shapes are our fills. Let's turn the stroke off. There we go. So we've kind of lessened it a little bit. We got no stroke on there. We got just the character. Now I want to go ahead and color him. But to color him, what I need to do now is now that I've isolated him, put everything off to the side. Uh, to play with my stroke a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and I got him selected, but then I'm, once he's selected, I'm gonna to go to the object, live paint, make, okay? Object, live paint, make. This is pretty cool. With object, live paint, make, now I can go ahead and I can put some colors inside there. Now I'm gonna test it. I go over here to the uh, tools here and I go over to where the shape builder tool is, AKA the Death Star tool we talked about before. Um, I left click on it and hold. And you'll notice right underneath there is my paint bucket, live paint bucket, that's what I'm looking for. So if I move my paint bucket over the object, you see how the areas turn red? That means they're hot, they're ready to accept color, okay? So what I need now is go ahead and take some colors here and put them in there. So I'm gonna go over to um, my, uh, change my colors up here and go from tracing to painting. And I've got my colors, I'm gonna open up a color library here. And uh, let's go to uh, nature and let's say, um, well, let's say uh, maybe foliage, maybe our seasons. I like seasons, how about seasons? Might find some interesting color combinations in there to use. Certainly you can just pick something right out of there, but it's kind of fun to pick uh, some of these color combinations. Here's a really interesting one right here. If you remember from last time, we go ahead and just click on the selection and it appears right here in your regular swatches. Then that way, this way you can sort of get rid of this guy and put him away. So I've got a nice little color selection here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my first color on there. Let's say, let's go ahead and do this sort of lighter uh, kind of goldenrod color. Got my paint bucket, and I'm gonna drop that color right inside there. Boom. And there we go. Look at that. It looks nice. And let's, let's go ahead and make this one, this one, and this one. And let's go ahead and pick the one that's just a little bit darker than that. Let's go ahead and grab this one right here. And I will go, well, oops, Command Z. I'll go select, click, click, click. There we go. Change my color up, and boom, putting it there. And the eye itself, let's make that this dark, kind of a cranberry color, brownish cranberry, that's nice. We'll make the end of his right there a little darker. Uh, the wings themselves, we'll go back and play with those in a second. Let's go ahead and take the legs and let's make those nice and dark, right? That might be nice and dark. If I, if I did them black, yes, it's almost too much and too heavy, isn't it? Let's go ahead and use that slightly darker color. It's here. And let's try this one here and see how that makes a nice color. Ooh, that does, that makes it nice, it's dark, but it's uh, recognizable, you can see it, you can make out the shapes. And you notice what I'm coloring? I don't have to worry about the, where the paint bucket or the little floating palette is. It's actually that little triangle. I have to make sure this little triangle is inside that space so I can throw some color in. I noticed up here I missed some color. So I had to go back in and select those colors. So I can use the eyedropper and select that yellow and back to my paint bucket and drop it right in there. And the same thing, I can go back to my eyedropper, select this, and then I can go ahead and grab my paint bucket and drop it right there. There we go. Now, as far as the wings go, if I want to get something really pale and light. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this really light yellow that's here, but I'm going to go ahead and open up the edit colors. And what I want to do is I want to go for uh, a slightly lighter version of that. So if I go down to the uh, my colors and my sliders, I can make this a slightly paler color. Look at that. I can go ahead and light it up a little bit right there. Say okay. And do you want to save it? You say yes, because I want to change that one. And I'm going to pop that in here. So I'm going to go light, oops, oh, to the body. Light and light. 
right? So just going in and just selecting these areas, making sure the point of that triangle is in those spaces. And one more right there. There we go. I've got my little bug and he's ready to go. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now uh, for my little bug here. So I wanna go ahead and save him as a singular object. So I'm gonna move him here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export him in a particular way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to file, export, export as, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in a folder there. Okay. And uh, when I do that though, I'm gonna set it for PNG and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna select use artboard. I'm gonna set it for PNG. So if I say use artboard, it will collect everything and including the perimeter size of the artboard. But I just want to export just the object with no background. So I'm gonna export and I'm gonna say, uh, let's say Hornet. I think it's a Hornet. Uh, and we're gonna say export. And I get one more pop-up that's gonna come up here. And this pop-up up here says transparent, right? 300 PPI, and I've got my other bugs in there, but I can cut those out afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it a transparent. You can have it as white or black, right? Um, but I'm gonna keep it transparent and I'm gonna say, okay. And there it is up inside here. So we see it, it's right there, but I've got both there. I wanna crop out these little guys on the side here. So on a Mac, it's just as easy. It's basically moving your, uh, your, your cursor up to uh, the corner of the area here, left click and drag right across, right? Making sure you've got everything in there that you want uh, to save. And all I have to really do right now is just go, uh, ready for this? Command K, that crops it, that simple. Command K, you don't even have to push save, it automatically saves it. Close it up, boom, and there it is. So I've got my exported image, it's got a neutral, it's got no background at all. I can drop it into any project I want to and it's ready to go for design, okay? So there you go, folks. That is a real quickie. Now a little bit later, I'll come back and our next video, we'll go ahead and talk about how to add shadow to our guy. All right, but for right now, there you go. Um, go ahead and now you know how to go ahead and import, adjust, color, and export your homework drawings. Have fun.